This is the time when we find I am Joseph in the scripture, in the, in the Genesis story. And uh, this is really the pivotal part of the entire story is right here when Joseph stops with the charade, reveals himself and um, with emotion, with vulnerability, and the brothers are just absolutely in shock. And so it's a pivot in the story. Everything changes. Joseph no longer has any anger. He no longer has any blame. The need for revenge is gone. And so the tension in the whole story just immediately evaporates. It's, it's resolved. It's done. This, everything changes in this moment right here when he says to them, I am Joseph, and then explains that it was God. As bad as you guys were, it was God, not you, who was really in charge of this. And so everything changes when he says, I am Joseph, in this story. And isn't that the way it is with us, with reconciliation, with forgiveness? Everything changes in our story, in our story with other people, in our relationships. Everything changes with forgiveness. Everything changes with reconciliation. Everything changes in our life when we come to God in repentance and ask for forgiveness. Everything changes, and so it's the pivotal moment of the story, and it's, and it should be, because that's the way it works. That's the way forget. That's how powerful forgiveness and reconciliation are. It changes, changes the story. So um, this week was the third annual Chachi Invitational Father and Son Surf Camp, and. Um, I'm Chachi, by the way. And so what it is, is um, if you haven't heard, um, seven of my fraternity brothers from a long time ago at FSU, and I get together and, um, in St. Augustine, and, and we bring our sons. And all of our sons are, there's two older ones, but the rest are the same age. So it's seven old fraternity brothers and eight kids. And... Um, This is the third year we've done it, and um, it's just a joy. It's a joy to see. It's great to connect with the old friends and tell the old stories. Um, And it's a great joy to see that our sons are friends, and they just immediately just bond together, and um, it's centered around one of the greatest activities on Earth or actually on water. Um, so, you know, how could you go wrong? And, and uh, so it's the third time we've done it. It was, it was great. And, and one thing I um, learned this year, or just came to me this year, was um, this idea of, of reconciliation and um, forgiveness. Because I had lived with these guys. We lived, all lived together. Most of us were in the same pledge class. So we went through that together. And then we lived together together. Uh, in the fraternity house, and then some of us lived together in Atlanta. We um, rented a big house up in Atlanta, and um, it was called the Delt House North, and we, uh, we all lived together up there, and, and what happens is when, you, when you're that close to each other, you end up stepping on each other's toes. Do you not? I mean, that's just uh, that's the way it works, and um, one guy in particular Um, He and I, really, it wasn't any one big thing, but over a a time, our relationship had just just taken different paths. Um, No one big thing, but just kind of several small things, and over time, that happens. And and so I had moved out from, I'd come, I'm a Florida guy, I could only stay in Atlanta uh, just to get Murray to come back here, that was the goal. Um, And, uh, you know, so I, I moved back. And um, and then he was getting married, and, and he didn't call me. And one of the other guys called me and say, you know, he, this guy needs your address for, for the wedding invitation. And I said, um, well, have him call me himself, you know, which was a jerk thing to, to say. And um, he didn't call me, and so I didn't go to his wedding. And, um, 
And so we, there was just a time where we really weren't close and we weren't friends. And, um, you know, that's changed in recent years. And um, Murray and I were over at his house and um, for like a football game or something. And some of his folks, his aunts and uncles came over and they were like, well, and they were explaining our relationship and everything, and they were smiling, and then they're like, well, what, where, where were you at the wedding, you know? Why weren't you at the wedding? And I'm sitting there, um, um, well, mm, you know, uh, maybe I was sick that weekend or something, you know? I didn't, I didn't really say anything. I just was embarrassed, because it's embarrassing. I mean, it was immature on my part. Um, we, we weren't, well, we weren't friends then. How about that, you know? And... Um, and so there, there we are, though, um, hanging out together, and uh, and our sons are having fun together. And you realize just all's all's forgiven. You know, um, I am at that age where it's uh, fun when you see old friends because the the old the the comparison and the competitiveness that stuff's gone long gone. You know, you're just happy you're both alive. You're alive. I'm alive. We know each other. You know. That's a nice place to be. Um, and so it's, it's, there was no really uh, verbal um, reconciliation or forgiveness. It just happened. And, and so, but here we are celebrating it. And so that's kind of what came to me um, this year that was special, that I just realized, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm recon we're reconciled. And isn't, isn't that wonderful? Doesn't that change things? Um, and sometimes you don't see somebody for a while and, and that negativity slips in. And then you see them and you realize that's long gone. And, and that's, a, that's a real joy. That's a joy. It's a deliverance is what forgiveness is. It's a great deliverance. And so the, the two keys to, there's two keys here um, to forgiveness and reconciliation. They're, they're in both of these, the Joseph story and in the Gospel of Mark. You can see them both here. And so one of them is, of course, a change of heart. Change of heart is always important part of forgiveness and reconciliation. And the Joseph story is we're diving in deep into it and walking through it this year. And, and really, as Dawn was saying, she was doing the exercise of, I am Joseph. Um, and that's what we're to do. We're to uh, feel his emotions. And, um, and, and as we go through that, we realize we start connecting our stuff to it. And um, it's a very healthy thing to do. And so um, in the Joseph story, we have, it's not Joseph's heart that changes first. It's Judah's heart that changes first. And I've talked about this, but Judah is really a absolutely key character in the story. Judah was the one whose idea it was to sell him into slavery. Was, was that, was that um, to save his life? Probably not. It was a selfish act, if you ask me. I like to think of Judah as the one who was taking silver into his hands as Joseph was being tied up, and Joseph's watching this. So, um, you know, he really wanted to test Judah and see if his heart has changed. Um, chapter 38, in, in this story, you see Judah's transformation, the change of his heart. The entire, Genesis 38, the entire chapter, is devoted to Judah in this odd story of how his, his daughter-in-law teaches him righteousness. And he comes to humility at the end and says, you're more righteous than I, I realize. And so you see his heart start to change. And then Judah is the one who goes to his father first, to Jacob. Jacob said, look, there's no way you're taking Benjamin away from me. He, Benjamin's staying here. I've already lost Joseph. You're not taking Benjamin from me. And Judah's the one that says, look, we can't go down there without Benjamin. Please let him go with us. I will personally guarantee his safety. And so Judah's the one that steps up to do that. And then now Judah's the one who steps up to the Pharaoh. Um, well, to Joseph, who he thinks not the Pharaoh, but he, you know, the Prime Minister Joseph. He he steps up to him, and and you know, here's this strange Egyptian. They don't realize he's Joseph, and so Judas steps up to him and says, uh, let, "Let me explain. Let let me 
let me explain where we're coming from. And so he's the one with the guts to do that. And, and what the, in this perfect test that Joseph uh, puts his brothers through, um, Judah shows that he's got a changed heart because he says, first thing he says in his explanation is, my father will die if we don't bring Benjamin home. His, his, you know, he'll go down to the grave. He, my father in, will be so heartbroken, he'll die. And so what does that display? It displays that Judah is no longer all about himself, that he cares about his father. And so you, you see Joseph's heart start to break a little bit there. And then he says, now, and I have personally guaranteed his safety to my father. I promised him that I would bring him back. And then, then comes really the climax where he says, he says, look, I'll tell you what, I'll be your slave in Benjamin's stead. Let Benjamin go free with the rest of the brothers and you can keep me as your slave. And that's when Joseph's heart breaks completely open. And that's when he reveals himself. It's because he's seen Judah's heart change. And, and that's, that's one key, absolute key to forgiveness and reconciliation, isn't it? It's, it's when, when the heart has changed. When we see someone's heart has changed, we're, we're ready to give them a second chance. It's certainly true with our uh, relationship with the Lord, isn't it? That he wants to see that our heart has changed. He wants to see that we have that soft heart, that we're ready to change. I mean, you see it, uh, it's just time and time again, isn't it? You see it throughout the history of Israel. Their hearts turn away from God, they get in trouble, and then they, then they go crying back to God. But their heart has changed, and they've become humbled. And if they're truly humbled, then God is right there, ready to forgive them, ready to reconcile with them. It... It was the message, it's the message that the, um, when Jesus, the passage in Mark, when Jesus sent um, the disciples out, they went out preaching, uh, preaching repentance. That's, it's been the, it's been the message, all the, it is the message of all the prophets. Change your heart. Change your heart back to God. It's the message throughout the Old Testament with all the prophets. It was the message of John the Baptist. It was the message of Jesus. It was the message of all the disciples. It's been the message of every preacher since the beginning. It was the message of Clinton last week, wasn't it? Repentance. Change your heart. And, and as Clinton said, it's not just about saying, you know, yes, I'm sorry for what I did. It's about allowing God to change your heart. And saying, I'm, I'm willing to change. I mean, the, the word in Greek really means to change your heart or your mind or your understanding. The word repentance. It's a change of attitude. It's a change of heart. And so that is absolutely key to, to repentance, is that change of heart. And it's going to, you know, we're going to experience it today, right here right here at the table. Um, we have the opportunity to do that, uh, to come with that heart and mind that's open to change, that's willing to change, that's really repentant. So a soft heart is ripe for forgiveness. So that's the first key. And then the second key to forgiveness is recon uh, recognizing that it's God's work, that God's work is going on. When you recognize that, then it, it really also, along with the changed heart, it, it changes everything. Look at this. This is Genesis 45, 5 through 7. And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves. This is Joseph speaking to the brothers. Do not be distressed. I mean, think, think of hearing these words from, from him as, as if you were the brothers. Do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, 
there will not be plowing or reaping and reaping. So as, as he knows, this thing's going to last for seven years. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. See, all of a sudden, Joseph sees not only that Judah's heart has changed, that his brother's heart has changed, he sees that God is at work. The, the brothers haven't even, they're stunned and they can't even say anything. They haven't even admitted anything or apologized. They haven't even done that yet. And he's already over it. He's saying, don't even worry about it. All the terrible things you did to me, I mean, how do you just forget that? And he does. He just says, listen, don't even worry about that. Don't be distressed about it. Because God's at work. And see, that is an absolute key to forgiveness, too. Because sometimes we're going to have people in our life that aren't going to apologize. And do we need to forgive them? If, if we want to have some sanity, we do, don't we? I mean, do we want to carry that around? Um, you know, they, they may not. But here's the thing to keep in mind. Recognize God's work. God can work through them, around them, despite of, in spite of them. And, and often does work through them. And so when we see, you know, there's nothing anybody can do to us that God can't overcome that. So, so how could we not forgive? Because it's really God's work. Now, some, there's bad things in our life where we, we can't really find the, the explanation to that, and, and some people have done some things to us that, that we just think God can't be anywhere around that. But he can overcome it. He's God. And so when we see that, and often we're mad, we, we get this anger bruised up in us from this old stuff. I've, I've learned, this is, this is here's, here's a summer tip, stay hydrated because I, I've noticed when I'm dehydrated, I, all this anger pops up. <laughs> you know, uh, and I can think of somebody doing something to me 25 years ago and get mad about it and still have that emotion. It's ridiculous. What a, you know, God, God's worked, okay? Well, that, that, why does that have any, anything um, on me anymore? Why can't I just forgive that and let it go? Um, stay hydrated, folks. That's, uh, that's one key in the summertime here in Florida. Hydration and forgiveness. That's, that's the mess. That's your take-home. That's your practical take-home today. So, and then Jesus instructed the disciples on, on really just this same thing. He said, now, now when you're going around to the towns, um, go and stay in someone's house. Abide with them. Rely on their kindness. Don't bring anything. Don't try to be independent. You're, you're going to have to go, and you're going to have to depend on some people. Abide with them, he says. And, and if they reject you, what do you do? You shake it off. There you go. You shake it off. Shake it off. You know, that he's telling them right there, listen, I'm sending you out. Not everyone's going to be kind to you. Shake it off. Keep going. Because it's not what you, there's, you know, he was saying don't bring any baggage for a reason, see? <laughs> Let's look at the uh, proverbial baggage that could come along. I don't want you to have any baggage if, if someone's mean to you, shake it off and keep moving. And, and, and you'll find kindness and grace in this world. I'm here. I'm working. You know? That's, that's what happens, doesn't it, Lori? Yep. Life, life can be hard. And, um, but God is, God is good. And he's always working. And holding on to stuff from, from old stuff and, and people... It's, it's not any good for us. That's just, you know, Jesus didn't say to his disciples, hey, grab about 25 rocks, throw it in a bag, and walk around with it as you follow me and, and be my disciple. You know, he said, don't bring anything. No baggage, guys. And that's, that's the way he wants us. He wants us traveling light, doesn't he? Forgiving. Because our hearts have changed 
and God can do anything, and God's always at work, so we don't need to hold on to anything. Forgiveness is a great deliverance, isn't it? Look at this, look at this last line on this um, Genesis 45 and verse 7. But God sent me, I mean, is, is this, this, this uh, pertains to the rest of the history of Israel on into the New Testament, Jesus and us. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. I mean, is that not a foreshadow to Jesus? This forgiveness that Jesus gives us, commands us. You're not, it's, it's very clear, in, especially in the Gospel of Matthew, you're, you, you need to forgive to be forgiven. You need to. This is, this is how it works. And so he's, it's very, it says in Matthew three times, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. It, that's because that's because it's all connected, right? It's one big piece. You can't dissect this stuff, God's grace. Jesus has given us a great deliver, deliverance. We are part of this remnant on earth. We are to live light with no baggage and forgive and be reconciled. And we know, we all know the joy of it, don't we? There's nothing like it. When, yeah, you have, you have some issues with somebody, and then, but, but then all's forgiven. It's, it's a, it is a taste of heaven, isn't it? To be forgiven, to forgive. So that's the challenge for us today. Um, from the Joseph story and for Jesus and from um, the Gospel of Mark, from Jesus' instructions. And so that's what we want to do in coming to the table today is, is forgive and be forgiven. While they were eating, this is from Mark, our Gospel of the Year. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we, we just want to thank you for this gift. This gift that comes directly from you. It's a gift of grace, forgiveness, and reconciliation with you and with others. And without it, Lord, this, this life is much, much too hard. And so we just thank you for this grace. We pray that we can come forward with hearts willing to change, with eyes recognizing what you're doing, seeing that you're always working. And so there's no reason to hang on to anything but just to let you have it and to forgive we, we ask for your forgiveness of our sins, Lord, as we forgive the sins of others. In Jesus' name, amen. So, when you're ready, take a few minutes and come down. This one in the gold is gluten-free. And, um, and then don't forget the altar piece, which is going to be in the lobby, where you can share a word or draw something. We're... Uh, we're doing that this year as a reflection and a worship piece. So take a few minutes, and when you're ready, come forward. All are welcome. <laughs>